Okay, I have a confession to make, gotta be completely honest here. Up until this point in my life, I have been somewhat terrible at backing up my computers. And I know, I know, I'm a tech YouTuber. I thrive on technology, computers, and all that other kind of stuff. I have servers, I got everything I need to do it. But for some reason, I have been absolutely terrible at doing it. However, thanks to Synology, that is not a problem anymore. What's up YouTube, Jason here with By My Bits. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about backups. That little thing that you don't know you absolutely need until you absolutely need it. Or you know you absolutely need it, but you'd never do it, in which case you're terrible. Guilty. The star of the show today is the Synology DS1618 Plus. Now this Synology is not meant to be a powerhouse. I'm not using this as like some kind of virtual machine server running Plex and doing a bunch of other stuff. I'll touch base on that later on in the video, but this is specifically for me used for primarily backups. And before I move forward, I do wanna give a huge shout out to Synology for providing the hardware used in this video today and even a a bigger shout out to Western Digital for supplying the hard drives that I'm using in this Synology. You guys all know that I am totally team Western Digital. So in today's video, I have six Western Digital red drives. <laughs> My precious. So beautiful. My precious. With that said, let's take a look at some of the specs that the DS1618 Plus has to offer. This NAS or network attached storage device comes with a quad core 2.1 gigahertz Celeron processor. This one specifically has four gigs of DDR4 memory, but you can expand that up to 32 gigabytes. On the back, you have four built-in one gigabit per second LAN NICs. The two eSATA ports can be used for expandability, so you can add additional units to expand your array. Two USB ports, another USB port on the front, and the device comes with a PCI Express expansion slot that allows you to either add two NVMe drives or two 10 gigabit NICs. And the 10 gig NICs is one of the reasons that I was super excited to get this device in my house and on my network. In fact, it was like one of two stipulations I had to even adopting this solution for my needs. One, I needed 10 gigabit networking, and two, I had to go with my Bay Western Digital. So again, huge shout out to Synology for catering to my little picky needs that I have. For storage, Western Digital sent me over six 14 terabyte Western Digital red drives, which gives me a total of 84 terabytes. Although after I set everything up with RAID 5, I got about 61 terabytes of usable space. You know, because how the whole allocation thing on hard drives work, they say they're this size, but really they're this size. And then with RAID 5, you lose a capacity of one drive for the parity. And something that really surprised me and actually saved me money was something that Synology offers with their NAS devices. And that is called Active Backup for Business. When I originally started talking with Synology about my goals that I wanted to use this NAS for, I recommended Acronis because it was a software solution that I was familiar with. Acronis allows you to actively back up your computer on the fly on a schedule, and it's, it's a very useful program, something that I've used at work and in a professional environment, and I was ready to set everything up on my home network to back everything up to this NAS using that software. But Synology told me right out the gate that Active Backup comes free with all of their NAS devices and allows me to back up my entire house worth of computers without having to purchase licensing for something like Acronis. Which right off the bat, considering I'm backing up four computers in my house, saved me $200. Active Backup for Business is not only free, but it can be used on as many computers as I want to. So as I expand my network with more computers, which I undoubtedly will, I can install it and have those automatically backed up as well. 
Now this software is installed initially on your NAS, so you'd go into the packet manager, look for active backup, and click install. There is going to be a little bit of configuration on your end, but believe me, it is super simple. The next step that you have to take is install the active backup software that you can download from Synology onto each computer that you want to back up. Once you install that on your Windows machine, you configure it to connect to your NAS. It's going to ask for the IP address and your credentials of your NAS. And then we move back to the web UI, where you're going to configure your backups for each device. Once your software is installed on each PC, it actually communicates and becomes a slave of that NAS device. And then you can set up your scheduling and configurations through the NAS interface. The way I set things up is I have my main computer, which has kind of a bulk storage like Vault or so RAID 1, has a bunch of critical data that I use. That's the biggest amount of data that I have on my main computer. And then I have multiple SSDs, one for the operating system, some for editing stuff. But the way I set it up for my main computer is that every other night it does a full backup of just the C drives and all the SSDs. And then once a week, because the data doesn't change too much on my mass storage, it backs up my vault, which is my critical data. And then on things like my laptop, I have it back up once a week because let's be honest, I don't really use that for very much. And then I have my new DVR build, which I've nicknamed Angry Inch or Mini Me on my network. This backs up every three days, ignoring the DVR footage itself, but just the actual operating system. And my spare computer, which is just an X99. I'm not really using it for anything at the moment, but I'm pretty much using that as like a potential streaming PC next time I do a stream from the studio. Again, I don't use that computer very often, don't change a lot of things, so it only does it once a week. Now with the active backup for business, I am able to backup network shared files. So I set up all of the app data on Loki, which is my main Unraid server to be read only. And then once a day, the Synology NAS connects to Loki, downloads all of that app data and backs everything up. I'm not backing up my entire Loki library because I mean, that's a 300 terabyte server and this thing can just not handle everything Loki has to offer. But all that critical data, like the app data, is automatically backed up. And while we're on the topic of Loki, I feel like a lot of you who know me and know my channel are probably screaming at the monitor saying, Jason, why is this a thing? You have a massive 300 terabyte Unraid server. Why are you even worried about a Synology NAS? And the answer to that is extremely simple, speed. I have tried a backup solution with my Unraid server for a lot of stuff on my network before, and this is why I haven't done it because Unraid is slow. You see, all in all, with the four PCs that I'm backing up and Loki files that I'm backing up, I have roughly about 23 terabytes of data. Now this is 23 terabytes of data being transferred to the Synology NAS, and if I was limited by a one gigabit per second NIC, it would take a very, very long time. But with the 10 gigabit NIC, I'm actually getting anywhere between 200 to 550 megabytes per second write speeds, or like roughly one and a half to four and a half gigabits per second. So when I'm running four PCs now, potentially additional PCs in the future, having those back up every night or every other night, yes, you can kind of stagger them if you want to, but having them limited by a one gigabit connection speed is just too limiting for me. Now I try to get over that hurdle with Loki by adding a 10 gig NIC, but the way Unraid works, once you surpass your cache drive limitations, your write speeds are slow. I'm talking even slower than a one gig connection. I mean, I usually get anywhere between 30 to 50 megabytes per second of raw write speed to the array on my Unraid server. And if you have something in line of like 23 terabytes of data being backed up on your server every week, it just is going to take way too long. Especially if you want to use that server for other things like reading files for Plex or dumping files from other projects or movie files. I just cannot handle my Unraid server constantly writing and backing up on such a slow paced backup solution. I just, it's something I couldn't do. And that's where this thing comes into play. I mean, 200 to 550 megabytes per second backup speed. That's putting everything into one file, copying everything over and making it super easy to keep. A common misconception or a statement that I hear from people about 10 gig networking is, you know, can you actually use it? Can you actually achieve 10 gigabits per second? And to be completely honest, most of the time you can't. And that's okay. See, the point to me with 10 gig networking is not hitting 10 gigs per second, not at all. The point is, is I can hit four and a half gigs per second. That's literally four and a half times faster than a standard one gig per second connection. 
So even if I can't take full advantage of a 10 gig connection, I can still get three, four, maybe even five times the speed I would normally get. So moving on, I wanna talk about another benefit that I noticed when getting everything set up for backup in my home network, and that is security. Now, I am not saying by any definition that you cannot use a Cronus or a software like a Cronus to securely back up your files on your network and protect those files from something like ransomware. It takes a little bit of configuration. You gotta kinda know what you're doing, but you can set up secure backups on your network with those software. But with the Synology NAS, it's automatically secure. And what I mean by that is once you set up the active backup software, it connects to the server using your credentials. You can still see those files on your network, which is useful for when you wanna restore, which I'll touch base on that here in a second. But those files are read only, which means if your network gets hit with ransomware, all of your shared data can be attacked by said ransomware. But with read only files on your NAS, all of your files are protected. So I really appreciate how easy it is to secure your files using the Synology NAS and the active backup software. Which brings me to restoring a computer. Let's say you get hit with the ransomware or your SSD dies or whatever reason you need to restore your computer, that's where a USB drive comes into play. Now this is just a cheap 16 gigabyte drive that I got off Amazon or eBay or something like that. But all you have to do is download the software through the Synology website, create yourself a restore USB like this. And when your computer goes down or something happens and you get ready to restore, you plug this into your computer, set it as the boot drive, and then you'll just walk through the steps of connecting to your Synology NAS and restoring that computer from your network. Once done, you remove this and you boot right into your operating system. So this makes things super easy to restore your computers right off the network, which that's kind of cool. So here I am finally with a complete backup solution for my entire digital life inside my house. Yes, if my house burned down, I'd lose this, but with the Synology, it actually does make it kind of easy if you have a friend or a family member with a NAS offsite that you can back up to that NAS as well which I really should do. I should have, you know, multiple backups in multiple places. I mean, it's only 23 terabytes. So in the grand scheme of like having 60 terabytes, that wouldn't be a terrible idea. Although that bandwidth could be a killer considering I have kind of slow upload speeds. But the great thing about a Synology NAS is that it is a multi-purpose tool that can be used for a lot of different things. I've looked at a different Synology NAS before and even made a dedicated video on what Plex can do on a little box like this, which to be honest, was a little surprising. It's not the fastest thing in the world. I mean, it's not anything compared to Loki, but for a little box like this, I think it was able to handle like eight or nine streams. That's transcoding in Plex from like a 15 megabit per second file all the way down to two megabits per second. So check out the links in the description below or in the cards above for that video. I didn't test Plex on this box today because Really, this is just meant for backup. I'm not using it for Plex or anything like that. But something I did do was Surveillance Station. Synology offers their own software. It's called Surveillance Station where you can hook up IP cameras to be recorded to your array. Yes, I have a dedicated blue iris box that takes all of the camera feeds and when it's triggered, records said events. But what I did with the Surveillance Station is I hooked up just my street camera to record all the time because let's be honest, sometimes cameras don't trigger like they should. And I figure if there's gonna be anything that happens, it's probably gonna be something out in the street where somebody was moving, but just not enough to trigger my camera, and I might have to reference that camera. I don't ever expect to actually need this, or at least hopefully I won't actually need this. But setting up that one camera, and I can do another one if I want to, to constantly record, does give me a little bit of a backup solution for my footage. Also, something I haven't used yet, but I do plan on incorporating it into my workflow, is the USB drive copying. Synology has a package that you can install that if you plug in a USB drive, it will automatically download all of that data. Which for me is very important because I do wedding videos on the side. I haven't been very busy this year because, you know, hashtag coronavirus, but it is something that when I get home from filming a wedding, the first thing I do is I take my drives and I download all of that footage and back it up. And although that footage isn't stored to a USB drives, I do have adapters for the memory cards that I use to download that data. So I plan on putting an adapter on the front of this to where when I get done with the wedding, I get home, I stick it in here, and it automatically backs up that data, which is really critical data on any kind of project, whether it's a wedding or some kind of film you shot or anything like that, it's critical data and you may not be able to go back and get that footage again. So before I close this video, I do wanna talk about one major flaw with the Synology NAS and something that I really kinda of hope that they fix in future builds. And 
To be honest, I'm a little let down. I'm sorry, Synology. I have to call you out. I know you sponsored this video. I do apologize. <sighs> but look at this. Do you see this? This is mesh, right? It's airflow, it helps with airflow, it's mesh, you can kind of sort of see through it. If you look in there, shine a light, you can see through it. You know what the problem here is? There's no RGB. I mean, what? it's 2020, bro, what's going on? Add some RGB. Like, like if there was lights behind this that you could control, right? Like let's say if data's being written to it, you can change the color depending on how fast the data's being written to it. Maybe the temperature, you know, get a little warm, turns a little red, but no. No, you just got mesh here. You have no RGB. I, I just, I literally can't even right now. Okay, I, I can't, I can't talk about it. It's just, it upsets me too much. I, I just, I got that off my chest. I, it had to be said. Synology, if you're listening, and I know you are, can we get some RGB? Please. So that's it for today, guys. If you wanna check out this Synology NAS, look in the links in the description down below. I will include some Amazon affiliate links to both the hard drives and the NAS used in the video today. Again, huge shout out to Synology for hooking me up and allowing me to back up everything in my house effortlessly and on schedule automatically. Thank you everyone for watching, like, and subscribe below and have yourself a great day.